Hey guys and gals, here is your video on how to tie a button knot saw shackle. Button knot saw shackle for hammock suspension made with 764 AM steel. This will be a 3 inch diameter shackle which is an excellent size for hammock suspension because when you hold it everything's right here and it's just the right size to replace a carabiner. So for this project we need 28 inches of 764 AM steel. First thing you want to do is your AM steel thin the ends three quarters of an inch take out four strands that's half of the strands. I've already done that on this I'm going to skip the basics and I'm going to move right on. Now lay your strands together like this but make one strand extend three quarters of an inch. So there we have a three quarters of an inch extension on one strand. And then get your splicing tool, whatever your favorite one is. I'll be using a latch hook and go right between the two strands at that halfway point where you bent it. We are making a loop right now. Next, find the longer strand. And there it is. And take that longer strand and capture it with your splicing tool and pull it through. Pull it through all the way like that. Put one strand in that loop. One strand. Whoops. Not four strands. Trust me, one strand is what we want. Okay. We got one strand in there. Hold it snug. Pull that strand out without irritating the loop. Squeeze the strands together and we're close enough now we're going to measure six inches from the end so six inches right there and next up we need a little piece of masking tape you may also use a rubber band we're going to use the masking tape to hold the strands together just pinch the masking tape together like that this keeps the strands equally length while we tie the knot. Double check that the noose still looks right, looks right. And now let's tie the knot. First thing, take one strand and loop it around the other strand. Like that. Now take this strand and do the same thing. Back to this strand down here. So, I'm going to just loop it around that strand. Grab it up out of there, and after I've looped it through that strand, now I'm going to also go through that first loop that I created. See right here, here's that first loop that I created. It's looped around this strand, and then this strand is looped back around the other strand. Well, I'm also going to go through that loop. So, go down and through it, and then snug it. Make sure it's right about up against our tape. Snug it up a little bit. To make everything look uniform, you can kind of roll it around in your between your thumb and forefinger. And that's about how we want it to look. So for the next part of this knot, you can see there's a loop down here, and then there's a, a loop down here. This loop. Basically, we got to take the, this strand, go around, and up through that loop. And then with this strand, we got to do the same thing. We're going to go around. And we're going to come up right here. And where we come up, we just have to make sure we come up beyond the other strand. So, for example, when I come around with this one and I come up through that loop, I just want to make sure I come up beyond this strand. So here's where tying this knot with this thing is really helpful. So we know that we want that strand to come up right there. We want it to come up through this loop, but beyond this strand. So we just go into the knot. See how I've gone into the knot through that loop on the other side of the strand. And now I can grab the strand that I want to pull through, capture it with the splicer, and pull it through. And 
and now again this strand is going to come around and it needs to go through this loop but beyond that strand so go beyond that strand with my splicing tool and I went under that loop also so now I can just take and grab this thing and pull it up through there so that's what my knot looks like now for the next part of this knot we're going to take these two strands and go back and we're going to go in between these two see how these two strands loop around each other so in order to do that we're going to use our yarning needle to open those two up and create a little passage we can also go in from the bottom You see I've got my needle between those two strands and I can see where it comes out I see it's not catching any other strands so that looks good and then next up I'm gonna step up to my paracord fid and open the hole up a little bit more you might need to push it down on your table and now we can grab those, we can come in from the bottom, grab those strands with our splicing tool and pull them through. Pull it through. It doesn't matter which strand comes out where. Now right now is a good time to stop and remove our tape. Okay. So it looks like pulling that strand through kind of closed up the channel so you can go and open it back up again a little bit. And if you forgot where the channel was, just pull on the strand that you just pulled through and you can kind of tell where it is and you can re that'll help you realize where you need to go in with your needle and open it up a little. So now it's opened up a little bit. So now I can carefully go in there. Make sure I'm not messing up any other strands capture it with the splicing tool again and pull it through okay we've got them pulled through and now we're going to do the initial tightening of the knot just pull each strand a little bit with your pliers you can use your hands too but the reason we tighten it before we do the final bury is because if we do the final bury if I bury these strands in the legs right now, after the knot tightens up, the bury point will end up being down here instead of up here where we want it. Because some of these some of the strands will pull out of the knot a little bit. Okay, the final step is to bury those two strands into the legs. So get your sweet splicing tool. Enter the legs about an inch beyond the length of the exposed strands. And go up towards the knot get up there as far as you can and capture the capture one of those exposed strands and pull it through so the strand is pulled through here and I'm gonna pull it a little bit more because sometimes it'll get kinked up there a little bit and it won't quite pull all the way through it's good to make sure that it's all the way in there so one leg is buried let's do the other one one inch beyond the exposed strand enter the leg oops don't do what I just did okay what the do over enter the leg without folding the latch hook up in here and causing yourself issues here we go all right okay this little bastard just sometimes you just have to uh give one of the tools a break up close to the knot with our splicing tool 
one strand, pull through. Ooh, the strand almost didn't make it. Double check that the strand is all the way tight, and it is. Pull the outer core over it, and now you have built your soft shackle. 230% line strength on average. Double check the noose. Yep. The soft shackle can be opened by pulling this strand, and then it can be closed by pulling this strand. It's very nice soft shackle. You might notice at first that one of the strands might be a different length when you put some weight on this the strands will equalize because they will pull out of the knot a little bit and that's why I build the noose snug initially because once you put a bunch of weight on this and the knot the knot equalizes you can end up with a noose that is a little bit looser than you expected I've done many of these and did the one strand in the loop method and it comes out perfect so there you go now you have a button knot soft shackle thanks